Ginnikor er en gedal siasta fyrkin fulgjur og villigu. Og res en utrona sakko høyre het en sjon resja. At ha emsje hennan og en kryd i nidin. En doktor Douglas Stichjade. May I just say first of all, this ceremony and all of you who are receiving gold awards is that I hope you recall this day as a very, very special day. And uh, it's, it's your day, and uh, I want to say a few words about it. I think it, if you are recalling it as your special day, you, you should think about what an extraordinary privilege it is to have heard what we have just heard from Professor Sullivan. And I, I congratulate you on that. You, I, 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 allow me to say it in Irish and then I will say it in English. So, there is an authenticity in what you're speaking of, of what you have said, uh, that uh, deeply impresses all of us. And in the end of the day, uh, these are the changes that I would like to see happening to some extent, uh, in many ways. Uh, there is nothing more important or creative than the act of performance itself. And in the act of performance, when it is combined with a statement in relation to the circumstances of the life of the self, you always know that there is something special happening. And there has, in fact, been something special happening. You are not publicizing your book, which is excellent. You're talking about your life. And you're talking about a concept which uh, is incredibly important, I think, in Ireland in relation to where we are now. Uh, it's interesting, the title you have, you see, poor, you know. Uh, uh, but the word poor wasn't in widespread usage in Ireland during most of my life. People avoided it. Sister Stanislaus Kennedy, my college in Canada, long dead now, and others. I discovered poverty in Kilkenny at a conference in 1974. <laughs> and, and in a way, it showed up something that was very, very important uh, in Ireland. People weren't talking about what you have just experienced now. They were talking about people who are different. And in a curious way, the phrase that has made, lingered in the public speeches now, uh, leaving nobody behind, has a very, very serious deficiency attached to it. It is that uh, the assumption is that the most of the people are all right, well on their way, and it's only a case of dragging the people after us and things like that. Uh, we are not all right, far, far from it, uh, be it in relation to what you have described, uh, be it in relation uh, to housing, be it in relation to the right of every child to have the same experience in relation to books. Uh, people having private meet, private fundraisers to buy books for schools and so forth. So it's important for the language to mean something. And in a way, it was one of the biggest issues we have facing us at the present time. It's a kind of a dead language, in which we find it necessary, in fact, to keep using what we found are our, our satisfying self-congratulatory phrases. Uh, as if you needed a dose, aren't we great? It reminds me of a man in Clifton one time saying to me about it, we were talking about tourism, we're fierce friendly, aren't we? <laughs> well, we're very good at this kind of, as it were, uh, getting language done. And what you have told us today, I could tell you very much, I don't t talk much about my own life because I have two and a half years in the presidency to go, but I can relate to what you have said. My mother, for example, entered the Augustinian church in Limerick by the side door because she didn't have the penny to push anything in the front door. My sisters and my father had lived, I think, all together in uh, 12 different flats in Limerick. And then the other side of it is the case in going to school in County Clare. There were four of us and there was only money for two bicycles. I don't say much of it because we're in an atmosphere and some of this could in fact not, I don't, never mind it being turned against me, but it be turned against those people who have had the courage that I've had the privilege to work with in my life. At 82 I have met such wonderful, wonderful people. I was speaking to some of them earlier this week in the trade union movement. Great, great people. But the importance to be able to tell the truth 
to tell the truth of the thing. And that is so important. But the most important to this notion about it is that events are events and bits of language are bits of language and so forth. It's time to get past that. You always, those of us who are in the performing end of things in many ways, uh, we'll always know who's for real. I know Sabina, my partner in my life, who's an actor, we, seconds in your note, in a, in a way. So this is my, f I don't give any messages to young people. When I became president 11 years ago, I had one sentence. I quoted a great, great writer who said, be the arrow, not the target. And I spoke to 800 young people. And what came back from the 800 young people, including people in prisons, was how never out of the top four of the, what they wanted for, uh, was equality. And you know, that's where the energy is. And you know what I think is so important as well among the, those younger people? Never outside of the top five was their care for older people. And when we had the acorn being established down here in the sculpture garden, and youngsters were pushing into it messages, they said, better Ireland for my granny, and so forth and so forth. And that's what it's about. But the most interesting thing about what goes wrong are when people find themselves not only believing in abstractions, these are versions of reality rather than reality. Uh, the versions of reality rather than, uh, rather than reality. Reality are the people we're passing with tents on the sides of the road and uh, which is and so forth. And you don't main thing about it. And mending isn't it a fantastic when we're very lucky to be given the opportunity to being able to look at it and to say, I'm going to have a, a chance to try and understand this. And then after that, I'm going to have enough bit of energy left to try and change it. And you'll know them like a shot. And this is the whole, all artifice that we got in, uh, in uh, professions like public relations. It's the way you say it. And, uh, people say to me, you know, your speech went down well. Well, really, what does that mean at all? But quite a fact of the matter is, was it making a connection with what people were experiencing? And will we all get somewhere from it? And that is uh, really what is important. Every now and again, I am actually allowing myself these reflections these days for many different reasons. And it is because of, see, of the urgency of the times. It's very important when the energy is around. Just wonderful to see, for example, children picking, interested in nature, picking up maggots and flies and not being afraid of them, looking in their hand and so forth. Looking at all, when I visit the schools and I see the people from all the cultures, 40 nationalities present. And I so thank all the young teachers as well, when I see them who spent hours in choirs, risking the level of that. And, 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 and all those years ago, as I, you have, might have heard me recently, 50 years ago, uh, talking when I was uh, working, uh, when I was working on the Retros Humanos, on human rights, uh, and so forth. And people like my friend Niall Stokes and others, and he said to me, very interestingly, I used to go home, you know, uh, from the door uh, to where I was staying, and I'd meet young fellows, and it was around the time of the First World Cup, and they'd say, Only oh, no, take it, small girl, and, that, and I would say to them, Well, that you'd have to go to the embassy for those. And what was one of the things about it, they would say, These are the people, who, he said, These are the people who want to hear what is happening. And these are the people who are really have uh, the right not just to hear the music, but also to hear, uh, uh, to hear what is happening. And I, I think we have come through an awful lot. So therefore, I actually think when Paddy Hillary picked the word Gashka, it's interesting the word Gashka itself. One of the things, when people would be at the end of the day and they wouldn't be run out of compliments for to say something that had been incredibly important, that had been accomplished. And whatever they would say in Irish, Rizzo Gashka. Or they would say, Gashka, eat the gentleman. No more than they would shout out and get a mugrine who would into music or whatever. And what they would say, they said, they couldn't put a full title on it and what it was that you've achieved. 
And to all the gold recipients this, uh, this today, I would say to them, is that you pick the project, and there were the times when it was going well, and there were the times that was a kind of the hit on it. But then there are the times I'm uh, keeping this going, and then there are other times and so forth. I was like, God him the car, just, I was fish your fool. And I do want to thank all those mentors and the parents and the teachers and others who kind of bring people through uh, that period where, in fact, you needed, uh, where you needed to the lift. But the awards, as we evolved over the year, many, many cases, something was happening, I think, and when I was speaking, really, uh, co-telling those suggesting there'll be the arrow and uh, not the target which is the very very last speech of uh, who is it all you can't remind me Raymond Williams. sorry Raymond Williams Raymond Williams Raymond Williams in fact who wrote the preface for a very famous book called sit down and be counted which is about problems in RTE when it starts it's the reason why <laughs> <laughs> which is the reason why Lilia Doolin and uh, and Bob, Bob Quinn and, and, and Jack Dowling all resigned as directors of television for it because of, uh, they wanted to have, to have it full of talent and so forth. So uh, in many, many ways, uh, I've moved on myself from description. Uh, I think as well, I think I've moved on from kind of mimetic things. I actually think it's necessary now to be thinking uh, in terms of what is possible. And everything, it might appear at times, as it does now, in a very, very threatening atmosphere. But it's at that time they actually need the most inspirational uh, uh, thinking. I always think about it, uh, about sometimes about what, what people do. But the heroism of people uh, uh, in, in, in many cases, and the people in who, the food kitchens, and I stood on and so on. And you know the most interesting thing, you would know this better than me in many cases, but I remember being in these food kitchens in some, it's sometimes important, it's important that we recognise uh, what people were doing and, and so forth. But what people actually miss out, and this is a class thing in Ireland in a way, is that the humour people have actually that it isn't only about getting so many uh, dishes out and, 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 and things like that, but it is actually the conversation. I had a great benefit in my life of working in bars, I worked as a waiter in the summer, and so forth. But it is actually, this is the point, that richness is not about money at all. Uh, richness was the quality of the relationships. I remember uh, uh, we sorting letters. We used to get a job at Christmas sorting letters when there were sorting offices, and we'd be put. And the conversations between myself and workers. And that is why work is more than, in fact, actually just about wages and what you can spend. It is about the way you spend your life with other uh, 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 life with life with other people. But absolutely, the good news about it is there's no excuse now whatsoever at any part of our planet for people being short of the basic necessities of uh, food and education and, uh, and that. And that's why it is so extraordinary. But I think you'll notice as well in many cases, the few, all of you who are getting the medals today, there's, sometimes it's collective, because I was looking at the projects, you're doing things that involve others. But the most important times are the times when you'll be looking, take today, and take today and say, you know, <clears throat> yeah, at times it was tough, but it's done, but it isn't the end of anything. And I have an opportunity of listening to people who have been describing different opportunities that are there in life and new things to do. And what is our bent, how lucky we all are this, in relation to the big issues of climate diversity, in relation, in relation to sustainable development, in relation to all of these issues, in relation to uh, uh, issues of peace, issues of re uh, rejection of, of, of violence. Maybe there is one last thing I wanted to say, very, very, very important, and that is about the word respect. All of that wonderful movement for Madre Natura, the respect for nature, respect for people of difference, respect for people, people of choices and in relation to all of that. It is the most marvellous achievement 
uh, to be able to say that one is able to deal with all this diversity in a way of giving respect. Why should, uh, I have to be very careful now about all of this thesis is sometimes, and that is in many cases, why should people be interested in two wrestling millionaires? <laughs> <laughs> As the planet dies, and it over to many, many cases. And you know what I used to think of when I uh, look back on, on my long life and all the different campaigns and everything? To be able to sit next to another person of whatever circumstance and receive warmth, respect, and humanity, and so forth. And it is why the assumption uh, that the people that the professor was describing, they're not from another planet, uh, they're us. And this is the thing where it is as well. And people have jokes and moments of great sadness and moments of loneliness and so forth. I often think as a poet when I'm writing back and that. I often think back at 15th of August 1946. I'm five years old. I, my brother and I are leaving my mother and my father and my sisters to, uh, uh, to be, be reared in another part of Ireland and, 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 and so forth and the excitement of a five-year-old. At the same time, I often look back on it now. I cannot, we cannot live other people's lives, but we can take on the responsibility that of all the lives that we touch and of all the opportunities that we will have in all of the different lives, of taking that experience that we achieved, that you achieved for yourselves as gold recipients now and enabling that in all of those other people. I do want to thank the staff of Orson Nocturnal for enabling us to hold this event here uh, uh, in, as I've said, in Oris de Hida, in, in, in Oris Nocturnal. And I do hope that Kershka continues with all his work of extension and uh, all of the important work, when it's Paddy's work, um, now all those work by back in the 1950s. When Paddy Healy reused that word, Kershka, there were 55, there were 250,000 people had left Ireland between 1955 and 1960. And in many cases they were living in very, very important sentiment. And this isn't in many cases, so this is a celebratory occasion, it's caloric. And this is the important part about it all is, we're able to celebrate all of our recipients now because we're moving into a new phase when new sets of values that are beyond any individualism beyond any materialism, value things like respect, kindness, as well as that, which is an, uh, uh, such an important word, and also the importance of language, that we, all words matter. And even if we have to pause before we give up big spiels of speeches and everything like that, is that when the words come, for them to mean something, something that is part of us, Something that is part of what we hope for ourselves and for others. August on top, we can go to rocks, but I'm not sorry. A cock rather make a shoe in him on the pier. Oh, yes, and I make ship shape went a chan of us. I so wish you all. I congratulate your recipients. I thank all those who help you in any way if you call it. I so thank this a wonderful, wonderful speech we've had to, to, to tell us here, reminding us in the end of the day the authenticity of our lives, the authenticity of our lives, respect between all lives, respect between people of all cultures, peace. We're not on this planet as a species to be aggressively making war. We're there to try, in fact, actually deal with the conditions in which we'll enable fulfilment to happen, not just for our species, but for all of the species of the world. Mavuikas live. Thank you very much.